always been vulnerable to the persuasive power of cool girls. When I was 19, two cool girls I knew had nose piercings, so I got my nose pierced. If a cool friend tells me to try a shade of lipstick or read a book, I buy that lipstick and that book immediately. No questions asked. If a really cool girl told me I could rock a shaved head, I'd give it serious thought. What these cool girls have in common, other than being cool, is that they are influencers, at least to me. They influence the culture I consume and the products I buy because I know and trust them, so their recommendation means a lot more to me than your average billboard ad campaign. This is the experience that modern influencer marketing is trying to replicate on a mass scale. Harnessing the power of an authentic, regular person, an influencer, to convince their followers that they too can live a charmed life if they only bought an acai bowl and some Listerine. But what actually is an influencer? And is influencer marketing any different than the celebrity endorsement and advertising of the past? Freddie Tran Nager, a marketing consultant who teaches a class about influencers at the University of Southern California, doesn't think so at all. He told me that since the dawn of civilization, religious leaders, royalty, and knights in shining armor have attracted mass followings, and they've done it by marketing themselves with a consistent brand. Only, they marketed themselves by making speeches on ancient street corners and pinning treatises to church doors, and not by posting a cute selfie with a Glossier lip balm. And in more recent times, celebrities and sports stars are always striking deals with brands. If the price is right, they absolutely will put on a Rolex watch before hoisting their millionth Wimbledon trophy. But the difference between celebrity endorsement and influencer marketing, though, is that anybody can do it. And the difference between a true influencer and someone who's merely popular, according to Nature, is whether or not the data shows that that person actually can cause an increase in traffic and sales for a brand. Agencies who connect influencers with brands aren't only looking for the biggest accounts. Sure, an account with over a million followers will get a lot of eyeballs on a picture of your FabFit fun box, but that doesn't necessarily mean that they're actually gonna convince those followers to buy that product. Instead, sometimes it's micro-influencers with as little as a thousand followers who are more likely to convince a more niche group of people to actually buy something because it's these small-time influencers who often manage to project the ultimate brand attribute, authenticity. Ironically, one of the biggest attributes that makes somebody seem authentic is your conviction that they haven't been paid to say something. But the more authentic an influencer you are, the better you are at selling stuff. And the harder you chase a manufactured authenticity, the more likely it is that things can go terribly wrong. This is when we most often hear about influencers in the news, when they've really messed up. Some highlights include celebrities endorsing snake oil, totally unregulated weight loss products to vulnerable young people under the banner of wellness. The girl who photoshopped the same clouds into all of her lovely travel photos. The influencer who shared photos of her motorcycle accident along with a prominently displayed bottle of smart water at the scene of the crash. And of course, the most beloved tale of all, when all those influencers joined together to promote the Fire Festival, the greatest elite music festival that never happened. Even as these kinds of stories might make you fear for all mankind, when you talk to an influencer, their messaging is relentlessly positive. They also don't tend to mention the money-making aspect of their fame unless you ask. When I attended this year's VidCon, a massive digital video conference for brands, industry types, creators, and their fans all jostling for attention, I asked a lot of influencers what an influencer was. To actually influence someone is like such an honor to be able to actually change someone's emotions in certain areas like for me my big thing is I want to help people get through that insecure phase of their life so the fact that I can influence people and actually do that is like mind-blowing to me the fact that I can make someone's day like makes me like want to throw up of happiness <laughs> that would be one kind of influencing for sure what is an influencer an influencer I think to me is you have people that look up to you not in the sense of like a celebrity you know you have celebrities but as an influencer um, some people might recognize you and They'll pick up on things you do, so personally I feel like it's best to always be positive, always be promoting positive things, being good, and just influencing the younger generation to do better. How much of being an influencer is like being working with brands and convincing maybe kids or people to, to buy stuff? Um, I would say that's not the majority of it. I mean, working with brands is like so much fun when it's a brand that you're like truly in love with, which is the only brands I'll actually do a brand deal with. But it's, it's less about convincing people to buy stuff and more about showing them how you use it and how you like it and then seeing if they're feeling the same way about it that you are, seeing if they want it. It's like more helping people, like giving them tips of things that you like too. So you see being an influencer is like a really positive thing and some like, I know brands are here too and they see an influencer as someone who can help them sell stuff. That too. Yes, that is true. 
kind of like a walking billboard at, at times. When I talked to these influencers' young fans, the message was the same. What attracts a fan to an influencer is how inspiring, how positive, and how authentic they come across. And who's right over there that we just talked to? Rachel. Tell me about her, because I talked to her, but I feel like I don't like know her well enough to be to freak out appropriately. <laughs> She's one of my biggest inspirations. I watch her all the time. She's amazing. What is it about her that inspires you? She's always so fun and she's really bubbly and she makes wonderful videos. And so do you know what an influencer is? Uh, yeah, it's just someone that can really influence you and just make you like be inspired. Hey, do you ever see a YouTube video where they're like, hey, you like me, buy Crest toothpaste? I know a YouTuber that does that. Who does that? Dennis. And how does it make you feel? What? Does it make you think you should buy that thing? No. Then you are a, a strong um, a strong bastion against American capitalism. Have you ever bought something because you saw it in a video? I wanted to. What did you want to buy? Um, I forgot. Can't have been that powerful then, can it? What is your YouTube channel? Brayden Chase. Brayden Chase, and what kind of stuff do you do on your YouTube channel? I try and teach kids to chase their dreams. Ooh, if, if I told you I, I have some dreams, but I don't know how to chase them or if I should, what would you tell me? I would tell you to just make them happen. Be you chase your dreams. Even when an influencer is as lovely and happy and authentic in person as they say they are online, though, their follower counts might not be authentic at all. As one disillusioned travel influencer, Sarah Malati, has written, when Instagram changed its algorithm away from an egalitarian chronological feed, influencers started to turn to shady methods to get back into people's feeds. They buy followers, likes, and comments. They get bots to follow and unfollow and comment on other accounts to drive people to their own pages. They organize groups of influencers who agree to all quickly like and comment on each other's posts to drive up engagement. They even pay to be featured on big Instagram pages. If you are trying to make money as an influencer, you are basically at the mercy of algorithms, brands, platforms, and marketing agencies who don't necessarily care about your well-being. You are easily replaced if your marketing power falls short. And if you're not white or thin or able-bodied, you're even more likely to be overlooked by brands as the British beauty blogger Stephanie Yamboa has written. This is why influencers often write about suffering anxiety and burnout from the 24-7 pressure to curate a perfect image to a wide public, including people who hate you. Think for a moment about how incredibly weird it is to make a brand out of yourself. The essence of an effective brand is its consistency. But if you think about it, a human being can never be as consistent the way an object or a business can. Human beings are messy and change over time, unlike your neighborhood olive garden. There isn't an ethical rule book for how to be an influencer. There are rules about how you clearly have to disclose sponsored posts, which the FTC has tried to crack down on in recent years, sending warning letters to Instagram influencers. Instead, the laws of influencing are ruled by brands who think you're ultimately disposable and platforms who could change their algorithm and your income at any moment. You may end up burnt out, broke, and publicly humiliated. But despite all this, people will keep trying to be influencers because after all, it still seems like an easy way to gain riches and fame, even if you come from nothing. Maybe influencing is just the 21st century way to pursue the American dream. What do you, what's your favorite kind of thing to watch online? Um, wait, what's online? What's online? On the internet. Like, I don't know what a, wait, I don't know what that is. It's the thing, it's the place you go, God, that's such a great question. What is the internet? It's the place where the videos live. You mean like, um, like where YouTubers post their videos? Yeah, it's the, it's a series of tubes that connects us all together under the sea. Don't take that from me.